The House will come to order. Sergeant at Arms, please clear the chamber. All unauthorized persons, please leave the floor. And members, I ask that you take your seats. I have the honor today of announcing that Pastor Eric Butler of True Vine Christian Center in Fairlawn will deliver the invocation. All rise. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today in your mighty name. And I ask today that as this assembly gathers to decide the matters of life over this great state, I ask that you would once again pour out your great wisdom upon all that have decision-making power. Lord, fill their minds with your understanding of all the small things, the people, the citizens, the situations that exist in this state so that they can make quality decisions that would change the lives of the people in this state forever. I ask, as Paul said, that you would grant to us wisdom and grace to know how to govern in a way that is pleasing to you. Cause those that are here today in this assembly to remember that it is by your divine hand that all men have an opportunity to rule. For there is no greater authority than yours. So today we submit our hearts to you, we submit our minds to you, we submit our will to you, that you would be able to turn this state called the Garden State into a fruitful place again, that people would look at this state in the days and years to come and see the turnaround and the excellence that exists in this state. And I ask these things in your mighty name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Butler. Please remain standing as Assemblyman Gordon Johnson from the 37th District leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, have all the required notices been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act? Yes, they have, Madam Speaker. Notice of the calendar for this session of the General Assembly having been sent to the members of the House, the Secretary of State, and the State House Press, and posted in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, I declare the House to be in session. Madam Clerk, open the machine for a quorum call. Are all recorded who wish to be recorded and properly recorded? Are all recorded? Madam Clerk, close the machine and take a tally. Madam Speaker, you have 77 members present. You have a quorum. We will dispense with the reading of the minutes. The chair recognizes Majority Leader Joe Cryan, who moves that the reading of the minutes be waived seconded by the Majority Conference Leader, Joan Quigley. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Speaker Wilson, Assemblyman Wilson. <laughs> Madam Chair, thanks for promotion. Your it's motion. My, it's my mm -hmm. pleasure, ma'am, to introduce Bongo's Rhythms. Bongo's Rhythm is a folklore Assembly originated created in 1978 by William Bungalow Hilton. Since that time, it has grown and developed into a society assemble. The folkloric assemble features some of the most exciting traditional musicians, dancers, acrobats, masquerades to be seen this side of Africa. Bongo's rhythm brings from various sounds, force, panegy of the old majestic empires of West African, reflections of ancient traditions and culture that still exists today. So let's welcome them, please. Bongo's Rhythm.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know I play drums, so I can't hear too well. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm. This drum we play, this music we play, comes from West Africa, Senegal, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Mali, Gambia, Sierra Leone, West Africa. And this drum we play, we call it djembe. Everybody say djembe. Djembe. If you're French, you say tam tam. But this djembe is made out of goat skin, wood, strung up with rope, and shank and shank. This particular drum here, pick it up short. It's called jun jun. Two headed drum with goat skin, strung up with rope, made out of wood. And this is a traditional drum that in this orchestra we learned from the 11th and 12th century of West Africa. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Assemblywoman Spencer. Colleagues, it is with great pleasure, and I invite you to relax and enjoy the performance of Mr. Kevin Maynard. I stand here under great stress, as do all of you, because I dare to speak. For the rights of my people, I stand here under great stress because I dared, as you, to speak for the rights of my people. This historic occasion probably means that I shall be able to sing again. Yes, I, Paul, to be able to sing again, as I wish, without being stopped here or there. Upon in Gilead to make a wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If you can preach like Peter, if you can pray like Paul, go home and tell your neighbor he died to save us all. There is a 
Just a moment, just a moment. It all depends a great deal. This is something that I challenge very deeply and very sincerely. The fact that the success of a few Negroes, including Jackie Robinson or myself, can make up, and here is a study from Columbia University, for $700 a year for thousands of Negro families in the South. My father was a slave, and I have cousins who are sharecroppers. And my success has never meant what it should mean. I have sacrificed literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, for what I believe in. I have sacrificed hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars, for what I believe in. I have sacrificed hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, for what I believe in. But I keep laughing instead of crying. I must keep fighting until I'm dying, but all man river, he just keeps rolling along. Resolution on the clerk's desk. Joint legislative resolution by Assembly Speaker Oliver and Majority Leader Cryan, Assemblywoman Keanu Evans, JC, Assemblyman Green, Assemblywoman Spencer and Tucker, Assemblyman Johnson and Maynard, Assemblywoman Watson Coleman, Assemblyman Conaway, Wilson, and Senators Lesniak, Gill, and Rice. Whereas the Senate and the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey are pleased to honor and salute Dr. Thelma Hurd, a highly esteemed member of her Garden State community. And whereas during her distinguished tenure of service within the Elizabeth Public Schools, 
Dr. Hurd demonstrated an uncommon level of knowledge, commitment, and creativity in her extraordinary contributions to the quality of education has been, and has been marked by her expertise in both teaching and administration. And whereas Dr. Hurd is a renowned and respected as one of the first black teachers within the Elizabeth Public Schools and as the first black principal at John Marshall School No. 20, where she served with distinction for more than 40 years, leading her students to reach some of the highest test scores in the school district. And, and whereas within all spheres of her life and work, Dr. Hurd has established a model to emulate and set a standard of excellence towards which others must strive. Whereas it's all about, and whereas it's altogether proper and fitting for this legislature to take note of this praiseworthy career of Dr. Hurd, therefore be it resolved by the Senate and the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey that this legislature hereby commends Dr. Thelma C. Hurd for more than a half century of service as a teacher and principal, pays tribute to her history of leadership and dedication in behalf of the citizens and youth of Elizabeth and this state, and extends sincere best wishes for continued success in all future endeavors. Majority Leader Cryan. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, and to all my colleagues who helped sponsor this resolution. What an incredible program, just listening to that singing, and someone else incredible to present to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we debate often in this floor the opportunities for education and whether or not people can make a difference. I am so, so proud, so, so honored to stand here with my colleagues and present to you a woman of excellence, a woman who served the city of Elizabeth School District for 50 one years. Can you give her I want to talk to you for a moment about School 20, John C. Marshall School in the city of Elizabeth. In 1999, the new principal came in. She was the fourth, she was the fourth principal in the past five years. A difficult urban school with challenges such as only 30% of the students passing uh, the language program, ESPA. The challenges of 25% or more failing math. The challenges that all of us come to hear about but wonder whether or not there are solutions. This lady right behind me stepped in and changed the atmosphere and the culture from minute one. Came in and said, we're going to have a dress code here. Our faculty is going to dress appropriately. Our students are going to dress appropriately. She set the standard for the city of Elizabeth. Most importantly, she said, we are going to improve our test scores. Our children can succeed. She made that statement day after day, and most importantly, delivered in the results. The test scores today in School 20, a challenged school in the great city of Elizabeth, are among the city's highest and compare anywhere in this state. And that is a direct result of this lady's leadership. She is by far the type of educator we all wish we had. The one who walks in the hallway on your second day and knows your name. And not only that, but tells you how good you are, whether you're seven years old and looking for a strike of confidence or a faculty member who continues to be challenged and just needs that little bit of support that it matters. Ladies and gentlemen, with the greatest of honors, in the city of Elizabeth there are many challenges, but yet there are people who step up who give the courage to say we can do better. There are people that make our city great. This lady right here is the lady who not only does that, she is the soul of the city of Elizabeth. It's my honor to help present the resolution to Dr. Thelma Hurd. Okay. Well, you got it. Come on. With that, I'd like to bring up my colleague, Assemblywoman Quiano. It's such a pleasure to be here today and introduce you to someone I believe is a living legend. Too many times we hear, we don't have great leaders in education. And here, I get to tell you, in the city of Elizabeth, we have a woman, a person of color, a doctor in education, who said, I want better for my children. And I can only say thank you, Dr. Hurd, for believing in our children your dedication, your commitment, and always asking them to do better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Thelma Hurd. I am indeed honored 
to stand before this assembly and thank you for not only recognizing me, but to recognize the thousands of children in the lowest socioeconomic status of Elizabeth who have succeeded in life because I went there with a vision. I said to the, to the school, I will turn this place around. I was the fourth principal in five years. No one wanted the school. But I said to myself, I will make this a haven of rest. I will make this a private school that operates with public funds. And I did it. The motto for every child in that school, from kindergarten to grade eight, is that one thing you know, that in life I taught you, I can do anything in life but fail. They are all a success. They know they're bright, they know they're brilliant, and they respect themselves, and they have moved the school system to a level that is receiving recognition, not only in the state of New Jersey, but in the United States as a whole. God bless my children and my faculty, my boss, Miss Jennifer Barrett, who's here, and I also want to bless all of you for allowing me to come here today because you care about children in the lower socioeconomic realm of life. Thank you. The ayes have it. Resolution on the clerk's desk. Joint legislative resolution by Senate President Sweeney, Assembly Speaker Oliver, and all members of the legislature. Whereas the New Jersey legislature is pleased to honor and congratulate the members of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity upon the occasion of its 100th anniversary, 100th anniversary. For the, whereas for the past century, the members of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, both past and present, has demonstrated their high level of public spirit through many worthwhile programs and benefit of the community. And whereas the members of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity have given generously of their time, energy, and resources by providing services to others and training its members to become positive influence on their communities and society at large. And whereas Kappa Alpha Psi has also maintained partnerships with Habitats for Humanity and St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and has implemented praiseworthy outreach programs such as credit abuse resistance education and Greeks learning to avoid debt. And whereas it is the strength and success of the state of New Jersey, the vitality of its communities, and the effectiveness of our American society, which depends in great measure upon concerned and dedicated organizations such as Kappa Alpha Psi. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey that this legislature hereby honors and congratulates Kappa Alpha Psi Phi fraternity upon the occasion of its 100th anniversary and, ex and extends sincere best wishes for continued success and vigor in the years ahead. Speaker Oliver. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, I am honored and privileged today to have the opportunity to commend and bestow uh, recognition and honor to Kappa Alpha Psi Incorporated. And it's very obvious to me that they got the same memo that the women of the legislature did because they are resplendent in the color red. Red and cream are the colors of Kappa Alpha Psi Incorporated. Founded in 1911 on the campus of Indiana State University. During those years in the early 1900s, African American men on campuses across the country created fraternal organizations for socialization as well as civic service and engagement. Kappa Alpha Psi Incorporated internationally and nationally has chapters in every state and significant numbers of countries. They have a history of fellowship, 
fraternal fellowship and raise money and invest their efforts in social and philanthropic causes all across the world. It is our honor to have representatives of New Jersey and Pennsylvania's Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity with us here today. And on behalf of the General Assembly and the State Senate, we wish to bestow upon them this joint resolution. Honoring and congratulating all members of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity on the auspicious occasion of their 100th anniversary. And we know, based on the work they have performed in a century, that they will stand here 100 years from now, continuing the symbolic fraternal brotherhood that they have experienced for 100 years. And we are proud of you, and we are glad to have you today in New Jersey General Assembly. Thank you. I will call upon Mr. Huggins to address the General Assembly. The chair, the chair recognizes Mr. Paul Huggins, the province Paul Mark of the Northeastern Providence of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. Madam Speaker, thank you so much uh, for this resolution to the body here assembled, uh, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity specifically. Northeastern Province is an area that encompasses from Dover, Delaware to Maine, to the United Kingdom, to the Republic of Germany. In the state of New Jersey, we have 69 chapters in the state of New Jersey uh, that do, as we heard earlier, a uh, guide right process with our uh, uh, many partnerships with St. Jude's Research Hospital. We've raised 1.9 million to that cause. We partner with big brothers and big sisters. We've partnered with junior achievers. A lot of things that we do in the community, uh, our main mission is honorable achievement in every field of human endeavor, whether it's science, arts, religion, and all else to serve to promote the welfare of humanity for all mankind. So I thank you very much. It's an auspicious day, and we're so glad to be here to be recognized. Thank you.